All right. I'm going to start by still asking the same question. The sound is good. That I asked on Wednesday. How many of you have a God-sized dream or a vision? I want you to raise your hand. Just wave your hand. All right. Because if you don't have a God-sized dream, you know, or a vision, then um, you might not be in my purview. You know, some of the things that I am going to be mentioning and our ability to step into the kingdom's economy, you know, is basically so that we, it can handle and sponsor. All right. So you must have a God-sized dream. When I say God-sized dream, what that means is that you must think big. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, don't think your village. All right. Okay. Because some of you, how you have grown up have so put restriction in your mind. All right. And you are thinking like that and behaving like that. All right. Okay. Look at your neighbor and say, don't think your village. All right. You, you, you know, push the care of the person in front of you and say, think big. All right. Okay. Now, uh, based on scriptures, Thinking big means you have to think beyond your means. You have to think beyond your reach. You have to think beyond your needs. And then you have to think beyond your years. If all of this, if you're making calculation based on your pocketbook and your salary, then you're not thinking big. Okay. This is precisely the mindset that is encouraged by scriptures for kingdom citizens. All right. So Joseph in a house broke, but thinking of nations bowing. David, backside of a desert. Am I talking here? So once the kingdom is within you, you don't think based on your situation, all right? You think beyond your needs, your means, all right? When we say that you think beyond your means, it means that you're thinking beyond your actual abilities, including your knowledge and your skills. What God is getting ready to do to you is bigger than your degree. Am I talking here? I say it's bigger than your inf I'm a, come and put your hands together all right it means you are thinking beyond your needs what that means that it's more than enough for your children and for your children children and for others if all that you're thinking is for just you and your family you're too cheap you're not thinking big when you're thinking big you're trying to bring a dream that nothing within you can exhaust it you're thinking beyond all right, your children, your children, you're thinking nations. It means you're also thinking beyond your reach. What that means is that that dream is a global vision. You have a global vision for people that in this life you will never even meet, but they will be touched by your dream. That's something that God is birthing in the inside of you. That you might not ever see the people, but what came out of you touched them. It also means that it is beyond your years. What that means is that, you know, what you are building is going to outlive you and leave an inheritance. Look at your neighbor and say, you better think big. All right. If you're going to think big, then you need an economy that can bankroll that. You need a new system. Because the world system cannot handle what God is actually going to do in your life. And so on Wednesday, we were trying to allow ourselves. You know, there is, a, there is an information that maybe from I will want you to, you know, you know, you know to help me with it. I, 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 I don't know. You know, I, we said on Wednesday, when a king wants to save someone from lack, what that king does, you know, is that, you know, there's a distraction. You guys are, I don't know what you guys are doing there. You know, you know. When a king wants to save someone from lack, what the king does is that he gives them a portion of his dominion. 
He gives them a wasteland. And these people must go into that land, must sell out. He's talking about a field. Must sell out. And then they must focus, look, their whole life so that they can possess it. Because the provision they need to bankroll their dream is embedded in the field. All right, so Jesus Christ said in Matthew 13 and verse 44, he said that this is how the kingdom is. You see, the reason why we're having problem in the body of Christ is that our mindset is not based on the kingdom. And you can be in church. The fact that somebody is speaking doesn't mean that he's speaking kingdom message. All right, so in Matthew, he said that the kingdom of heaven it's like this. There is a treasure that is in a field. And that field is given to a man. Now when it is given to a man, you have to locate it. So a man stumbled on the field and found it. And then, listen to me, the field has everything that that man needs. Alright? Has an all these things so what he was having based on the economy that he was in can't sustain him so he had to become poor based on that economy so he sold everything and then invested it in that field that field is the kingdom then he now buy it, it. in other words Somebody say field. He sold out for it. He focused everything. Some of you, what you are running after is in the inside of you. The Bible said that the kingdom is within you. Somebody say field. Alright, um, I'm going to digress a little bit and then a little bit technical, not necessarily techni technical. I'm a physicist. In physics, when you mention field, it has a different way, you know, because a field has a field force. You see, some of you, the reason why you're not receiving an aid, a support, a push, a force, is because you have not located the field. You have not stepped in the field. When you step in the field, there will be a pull towards the fulfillment of everything and a supply. Somebody began in Meneke, but you're going to, okay, all right. So, you know, a force field is actually a vector field. You know, you know, you know, it's a non-contact force that is acting on a particle when the particles step on the field at every level of the field. You know, you know, you know, all right. So, we can easily, you know, I gave you, help me with it. You know, that a force field is a force, you know, on a particle. The particle is you, okay, so like that man. What he needs is in the field. So he has to step on it. All right. It's a force. It's a force, you know, that the particle is going to feel or experience if that particle is at a point X in the field. If the particle is not in the point X in the field, everything that can make him succeed will be in the field, but he's not going to experience it. Why? Because he has no soul out into the field. All right? That's why you have magnetic field. That's why you have electric, electromagnetic field. Now, how many of you have seen high tension? You know, then just a little bit above it, there are spikes around it. And then there is a sign with a skull and a bone. How many of you have seen it? Come on, talk to me. What? Are they saying they're telling you that where you are there's no force that can impact on you but when you begin to climb so they put that spike don't cross because when you cross you don't have to walk there is a force that will pull you and attach you to the wires nobody began with that why no why would you talk about jenshi in what jaka do you feel you're pushing away in a chiki? It's pulling you in, right? 
Okay, right. Because you entered into the field. And when you enter into the field, it is permitted for the field to help you towards where you are supposed to be. Come on, put your hands together. So Nepal put spikes. I said, don't cross. Because when you, immediately you cross, you don't have to pray in tongues. It will pull you. That ganka ahadea wire. Say, and oko itache. Say, abugaka. Because the force will, same thing. There is a wealth field. There is a healing field. There is a prosperity field. Is a force that a particle once you step into that field, there's an atmosphere of healing, there's an atmosphere of wealth, there's an atmosphere of power. When you step into it and use the technology, it pulls you and drags you. Come and put your hands together if you don't. I said, Come and put your hands together if you understand what I'm talking about. The major problem is that you never locate the field, you never enter the field, you don't come to church, you don't study the word, you don't get a I'm talking here. You're not in a point X in the field. And as long as you're not in point X in the field, you will not experience the aid, the pool. The Bible said that grace is going to multiply towards you through the knowledge. Knowledge is a field. So when, when you the grace will multiply, the acceleration towards what you need will be ah. That's why some of you you are a mystery. If people can define you, you are actually not in the field because the kingdom is like a wind. So when we think big. It's beyond our means, it's beyond our yes, it's beyond our needs, it's beyond our reach. And people will be confused because you're in the same office. But they don't know you step in the field and you are having added advantage, not based on what you have done, but based on what the field has been. Listen to me. The man didn't create the treasure in the field. He didn't work for it, no. The treasure, even if he never goes there, what was for him is there. The only thing that he cannot experience it. In our family, the religion, everywhere. So the kingdom of God is of no effect because you have not stepped in the field. He said that he could not do. Yeah. Not that what they need is not there. It's in supply. Because when Jesus arrived, the kingdom arrived. The supply arrived. You are not safe when you are dependent on the world system. The world system is not wired to supply your need. And when you're dependent on the world system... Your purpose and your dream will be on a shelf. The only time you will come and begin to accelerate until you go all in, all in, into the kingdom and start cultivating the wealth that is buried deep down inside you. Wealth in the field. When I say come to church, it's not because I need crowd. Well, we need crowd. But it's because there is a place where when you get saturated there, things become aided. Because kings rule by understanding. You can rule in your domain when you don't know nothing. Now, on Wednesday, we made a statement <laughs> trying to explain this. That Hebrews speak in pictures. And so when the Bible says, take dominion, it's giving the image of a man, listen to me, that is going deep into the forest to extract honey from a beehive. That's a picture from a honeycomb, a beehive. Now watch. The man must first know where the beehive is hidden. Just like this man 
Then the Bible said that his storm will know. He must first know that there is a treasure hidden in the field. Then the man must blaze the trail and create a path. Not God. But everything for him was already created. He didn't walk for it. Then finally the man must be able to know how to seduce the bees with a strategy. So that he can skillfully use smoke to calm them. So that he can take the treasure that they created for him. The bee is made for him. And when he is doing that, he should be able to do that without destroying the bees or the beehive. Because if the bees are not destroyed and the beehive are not destroyed, he had eternal supply. Now watch. I'm going to go somewhere. You see, you guys are wasting my time because that's what I taught on Wednesday. The bees made the treasure for him to find. He never earned it. That's why if you are performance believer, you are miserable. You don't do or perform anything for God to bless you. You are not performing. When you are performing, you are moved to the works of the law and you will show you the kingdom. In this kingdom, everything you need, you don't earn it. It's provided for you. You just receive it. Shut up. Oh, shut up. Not because of your beauty, not because you fasted 10 days or 40 days. That's performance. And I'm not saying that fasting is not good. Not because you pray 12 hours. No. And I'm not saying that prayer is no good. Some of you are thinking you got what you got because you prayed 40 hours. That will cut you away from grace. Because grace, you never work for it. It's given to you. Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on. And it's not an act. You have to understand something about, and I mentioned it. The only person that is an architect of his subjective world is you. And your subjective world create the root. And if the subjective world is not created, the fruit will not show forth. All right. There is two body. There is what we call the body of sin. The body of sin is what the Bible calls S-I-N, sin. It's different from S-I-N-S, sins, which is act of wrongdoings. They are not the same. S-I-N-S is a fruit in which S-I-N is the subjective inner world of the person. So when Jesus Christ came, what he did was he now killed the nature of sin. And then brought another nature in a seed form, kingdom righteousness, holiness, and put it in the inside of you. Some of you, you're still committing sin, but the nature of righteousness is in you. Because it's in a seed form, and you never allow it to get into the root form so that you can see the fruit form. That's why you can have Christians committing sins. They don't have the nature. That's why the highest thing that God did for you is Jesus to die. The highest thing you will ever do is to renew your mind so that it conforms to the nature that is in the inside of you. When you do that, the seed begins to create root. When it creates root, you don't have to struggle. The righteous act is automatic. Come on, Buddha. come on, put your hands together. Some of you are in religion. I said, come on, put your hands together. That's why when you come to the kingdom, the kingdom is released in you in a seed form. Everything you need is in it. You have to make it to become root. And how do you make it? By giving into it. 
That's why you come to church. That's why you study. When you don't give into it, you will do rituals for the fruit. But it's going to be temporal. When the root is there, the fruit is eminent. The reason why there is no fruit is because there is no root. The root is your responsibility because who you are on the outside is as a result of what you are in the inside. You don't change a man from the outside, my friend. If you want to change a man, it's in the inside. Come and put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands. Your so the bees made the treasure for him to find. He didn't earn it. It's not his. Someone put it there, made it for him. You have to know it. Nothing you have here is yours. And that's exactly how the kingdom works. We don't earn the wealth. Because it's already made and ready for us to receive. We hear that I need a sweat in and now you're, you know, your you're thinking is your activity that is giving you. And in this kingdom is 100% dependence. If there's no dependence, there can be supply. I'm going to take you somewhere. We don't earn the wealth. But however, the receiving of it, listen to me, must be done without destroying the source that makes it for us. Some people in the kingdom became wealthy. Now they are proponent of destroy am i talking here okay now if he gets it and then he destroys it then he will never get it again another thing that he needs to do you must learn the skill of extracting and receiving what god has made for us without corrupting the source or destroying its ability to produce once that is done then we're going to have an everlasting supply for our purpose. Remember, you're thinking big, your salary can't handle it. And you need a consistent everlasting supply. The only thing that supplies everlasting is the kingdom. And of the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Come on, put your hands together. Anything that is not in the kingdom has an end. That's why if I give you one million, it will end. Because once you are in this system, anything atrophy. So the limit on this system must be broken. And what perpetuates the increase of the kingdom is a factor of righteousness. The Bible said that the kingdom is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, joy, peace in the Holy Ghost. All right. When righteousness is attacked, that's why you are the righteous. That's why the nature you have is righteousness. So that you are not in worry. What makes you to worry is you're thinking things will finish. When you have righteousness, things don't finish. Because of the increase of his kingdom. Oh no, come on. Put you. Oh, shut up. And what steps you into the field, is obedience and a factor of faith. Jesus Christ brought the, the Bible says he broke. He broke the limitation on the fishes and the loaves. Broke. But however, for it to break, it has to move into his hand. Who is he? He's the kingdom. He's the government. When he came, he came with government on his shoulder. Widow, go make cake for me. When she, immediately she obeyed, it pulled her into the field. And it has an attachment of another system. And the bushel never ran out. The oil never dried. Why? She came out from a system into another system. Go in, lock the door, pour. She obeyed because in this system, obedience operates in this system. You're not, you're not hearing what I'm talking about. I say you're not hearing what I'm talking about. Some of you could be the towering kind. But you see, you cannot step into everlasting supply when you're not obedient. So you must learn the skills. We must also make sure that 
we don't destroy ourselves in the process. There are some people, they were following God, they become wealthy, now they are dead, completely out. The Gagia say, Mata, Mata, Biu, Ukube, Shekaba, the Kanaga come and carving Kankani, and then Kanaga is like a story. You see, in this kingdom, when you save, you die. You don't save your life. So when the guy broke the bands, I said, he said, God, you're a fool. This night, then Okiranka. I'm not talking here. And I'm not saying saving is not right. What that is saying that he is depending on his wealth. In this kingdom, we don't depend on what we have. We depend on his kingdom. That's why, because we depend on him, anything he tells us. Oh, no, Nicole. Wow. Are you happy you're in church? Now, so when the sun now on Wednesday, they are frustrated because I'm just repeating things. But are you getting something? Many people destroy themselves because they have not developed the skills the principles and the tools of the kingdom. And so when you see people, they are left broken. And you will always be broken as long, you know, Dr. Tunde, you're welcome back. <laughs> when, you know, stress, the Lord is your strength, man. <laughs> you're going to be left broken as long as you're depending on the world's tools to sufficiently supply for your life. The world has limitation. Whoa, can I like you? Whoa, I can say. Whoa, boom, and close the company. Whoa, boom, Michael, you crash. That's why millionaires hang themselves because they are holding on. Am I, am I talking here? Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Yes. Look at what one statement from a man one year ago, everything recashed, everything started spiraling down. One statement. Statement, it might be one minute back. Subsidy, gone, gone. Like Namutani, gone. One statement. That's the system you're depending on. I want to introduce to you a system that his words are everlasting. The grass withered, but his word abided forever. Cannot hear. Nothing changes in that kingdom. When he says it, he must bring it to pass. That's the kingdom I want to introduce to you. It's a kingdom that cannot be shaken. While everything is moving, baby, you're standing and nothing gonna move you. Come and put your hands together. With your eyes, you're going to see the falling of the wicked. A thousand shall fall by your side. Ten thousand, now I'm gonna, because he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, baby, shall abide under the shadow. Come and put those hands together if you understand. He shall say of the Lord, he is my strength. And when others are saying there is a casting that, we will say there is a lifting up. Why? Because his words is dependable. His words is immutable. His nature is, I'm talking here, I can hold on it. I can go to bed. I can rest on it. I can sleep on it. Ah! If he says it, that settles it. Maybe I can put my bottom dollar on it. Come and put your hands together. I trust that economy more than this. If I'm more than the, the, the national anthem, the Akakao, I trust that economy. <laughs> when you look around, you're going to see the world's tools. The world's tools, they are not even working for the world. She, they make a statement in Hario, Bebe Akasa, Kulum State of France. He's spiraling. Anytime you see a story, a story, a parable, an act in the gospel, is because Jesus Christ is trying to tell you something. So in Mark chapter 5, there's a story of a woman. When you read from verse 25 to 34, it's actually trying to tell us what the world system is. And it's painting out the nature of the world system that you are depending on to solve your problem. Religion can't help you. The world can't help you. I said it in this place. <laughs> Doctors, 
Zani nga manager na ka kawai kafin ka mutu. Ana ta mai kaje ya kai wannan abun ka da manager na ka. Ni ya rike ce sai da kifo yayi Google. Mene psychosophalate barare sai a try one of drugs. Ku je ku siya wannan? Amma da kan ka mutu ba doctor da zai biya maka kudin da ka kashe. And you're depending on that system. Kai doctor na na da kyau. So she had tried ya kana dare kada you guys be serious i'm preaching help me come on no i have doctors here plenty of them they know me they know what i teach they, they know i'm not coming against them no drug can heal you if a drug can heal you jesus wouldn't have taken the stripes you know somebody be gani me neke whatever is a delusion to hold you on it abun yana kamar yana aiki fa baya aiki you can't solve a problem that emanates from the world with the solution from the world. When you want to solve a problem on earth, you have to bring it from unseen. Because everything that is on the earth is temporal. That's what the Bible says. It's proskahiros. Why we look not at the things that are seen. For the things that are seen are temporal. But there is a something that is also eternal that changes and that is the thing that are unseen for the thing that are unseen are eternal that's where the solution is you know here that's why god wants to rule the sea from the unseen through the sea but inside the unseen you don't understand god wants to rule the earth the sea from the unseen heaven through the seen man that is on the seen earth but is inside the unseen your spirit because it's the unseen that changes and affect things and if you don't know the unseen you don't know your spirit you don't know the spirit of god you don't know the word of god you know everything here is prosca heroes so in the unseen which is the kingdom of god Everything that you need for life and godliness is not going to be created. It's already there, made for you. Waiting for you to realize it and take it. If you don't take it, and then you use the world system, what's going to happen? So she tried every solution the world offered her at the time. That solution will make you grow worse. It doesn't have answer. Then... One day, she started hearing about a man. That man came with a kingdom. So a kingdom is being procasted. That man had a different program. And his treatment is different from an issue. Turn the name for your feet the status quo. You have to be patient. You have to be patient. Say, I Such a patient now. There's a demon in, in the patient. That woman is shy. But look at Jesus. He came, a woman bent double. Doctors will say it's arthritis. When he looked at her, he said that she's bound by a spirit. Because while you are thinking is an earthly solution, he is saying the solution is spiritual. So in two days after, let's say it's a, it's a demon. That could be some making that because no school will tell you anything about that. That's right. That's right. That's right. And he used his word and drive out. You're not hearing what I'm talking about. Woe unto you if you're depending on this falling system. It doesn't work. And if the system of the kingdom will work for you, you have to stupidly depend on it with everything that you have. Then she heard. Meanwhile, she had nothing to lose. But if you don't have to suffer before you come, you can come and escape the experience. Uh, no, God will never use the thing of the devil to teach you any lesson. How God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and the power who went about doing good, 
healing all that were oppressed of the devil. You can't use the tool of the devil. You ask how to handle his children. So if you're, if you're sick, it's not sometimes you can be sick. It's not because you do anything. Ah, You are still a pagan. You're not a believer. There's nothing that I will ever do that will cause God to do anything to me. Because even before I was a sinner, he died for me. How much more than now I am a son? And if what I have done abrogated his healing, it means your problem is more powerful than his power. And that's a lie. So you don't allow yourself in condemnation. That the reason why Anna, now, then Anna said, okay, confessing, confessing. Some of you, you confess sins that you don't even commit. Even to Nanimu, Azunubamu, Azunubamu, you go there, you go there, you go there, you That makes you sin conscious. And once you are sin conscious, you cannot tap into the kingdom. You have pulled yourself outside of the field. When we are here, we come boldly into the throne of grace. Because what he does to us is not as a result of our act. We don't earn it. There is nothing you will do that will make you deserve. You have to know what he has given for you freely and take it. In the house of refuge, and if you want your attitude and act to change, work on your subjective wall. So she heard kingdom broadcasted, she heard about a man, different program. I think maybe she heard Matthew 8 17. Look at Matthew 8 17 in L NLT. Matthew 8 17 in L NLT. Matthew 8 17. Now, Rubu Tama can ask him back with the verses in which you're supposed to go. This fulfilled the word of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah said he took our who is the he? I said who is the he? Why she's busy going to doctors? Somebody came and boom when she studied she saw there's a man that this thing I'm going through he took it and if he took it I don't have to have it. Number two, he what? He what? He removed. Not he's going to remove. He removed. Done. Done deal. Pass. There's nothing that she could do. So doctors collected her money. The system made her worse. And they never refunded. Religion told her. You are unclean. Don't come to the out. In fact, you read Jesus so that I should get the morning. I was in the funeral. Our neighbor died. The pastor said that there are some of you could have the terminal diseases. Come, Jesus, come, come. So that you should get some of the hooter. No, you don't have to go to summer to hooter. You can hooter right now. Because it's not when you go to heaven that he, that he took. It's not when you go to heaven that he removed. Right now that you're looking at me, he took. Right now, he removed. Am I talking here? So while they were telling her, she just realized, I don't have to carry it anymore. Now, guess what? Guess what? There's a reason why nothing is working in your life. And when you say it's not working, I'm going to help you. So religion tell her, one day when you die, you're going to go to heaven. You are going to be better. So baby, look at me. Adunia nang, you can come into that place. Come and put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. In this, you don't take anything to him. You find out what he has already given to you. You go in and take it. You don't ask. For it. 
you are not hearing what I'm talking about. You don't take a phone because Jesus is on the main line. No, I am a man under authority and I say to this one, go. And he goes. Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. The kingdom that Jesus revealed in this story, listen to me, has a readily available supply in our time of need. Now, I'm going to show you one crazy scripture. Luke 15. <laughs> you guys His father said to him, look, dear son, with your religious self. Because some of you, you think it's performance that will give you. But look at everything that I have is yours. But that son was broke and the broke make him bitter. Because he never know that everything, you see, is a is an abnormality for you to run after what is already yours. Look at it. everything. The father is a picture of God. The God is a picture of the kingdom. Everything that the kingdom has is yours. So you are saying that Samo, 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 Babu Nyuwa. So Babu Nyuwa Asamako, the father has. Babu Chua Asamako, the father has. Now look at that. Everything the kind of soka jeka Samo Asama is yours now. Everything. If something is yours, you need to take it. Now watch. If you can plug your faith into it, then you're going to see the results right now. If you can plug your faith into it, listen to me, everywhere that you are, you're listening to me, whatever the doctor told you, if you can plug, because everything that is of the Father is yours now. You can take it. If you can plug. So when she does that, listen to me. What the devil has done is that he trained us by moving our better days into the future instead of the now. And what he does is that he pushed our hope into a mystical place called heaven. So that we don't plug into the power of heaven while we are right here on earth. So the pastor says, Listen to me. Salvation from sickness or poverty happens when your faith, listen to me, moves from the earth's experiment to heaven's truth. Once your faith moves there, the supply of what is yours, everything comes. This boy doesn't even have to ask the father. All he needed to do is just call the servant. And then the fans just say, ah, Baba, I said, Baba, I said, I look at it. Everything is his. What is yours, you don't ask for anybody. You take it. You only know and realize that it's yours. And you believe, you have to believe the integrity of the word of your father. And so, come Jay Garki, when they cut to me, Chinya Baba, and Kukashi, Nawani, one Chamako, look at it. But you see, he's in religion. This son of yours, the Ekar Boku in Kayaja Kashima Halot. And you understand money in good acts, they say, Samu, everything. God, you know, you have to rejoice. He was lost, Monsa Meshi. Akashi Meshi Katon Jaku. You don't have to move to heaven to experience breakthrough. You need to move your trust into the kingdom right now. Question. How, and that's where the problem is. Kings rule by understanding. And in the dilemma, how do you develop the faith and move your faith? Because some of you, you think you have faith, you don't even. Because faith have evidence. Because when you move it, that's what's going to form your breakthrough. Your dream can be sustained. And the dreams got painted in you. You won't find it by just attending church only. Not even finding it by just reading Bible kawaii. Or by doing cultural practices. Mantra. 
anointing. No, you don't. That's not how you get it. You must plug into the kingdom's original economy and supply. Listen to me. By believing into it. You can be in church and never believe. You can read Bible and still not believe. Most people, they go to church every day, never believe. Why? You have been trained. Whenever the system is educating you, it's anointing you. Most of you have been anointed by a particular kingdom, by a wrong way of thinking. You are trained. You are trained. Whoa! You are trained. You are trained. You are anointed. And you are trained. Your training is depicted in your words. You are trained. Come on, put your hands together. You see, you're trained, you're trained. And what you are trained in, you believe in, what you are believe in, we hear it. You're trained. And that's why nothing, okay? So you, some people read the Bible regularly, never believe. So because it's not working, so what is it? Ruah, holy water. May. So you, you want activities. I'm going to help you. Never even entered. How you move in is only done by believing and confessing in agreement with what heaven has published in the earth through preaching. It's a foolishness. Now I'm going to take you five minutes. Oh God. If you're writing, I want you to write that. Faith receives what the kingdom provides or supplies. You don't walk. That's why the highest thing you will do is to enter rest. Faith receives. Faith receives. But this faith, what faith? Because anything, the reason why you're saying what the other kingdom has trained you is because you have faith in it. Anything that speaks to you develops a faith in you on that. The movies, the world, everything. Because faith is developed by hearing. And in this kingdom, what position you in the field is faith. You don't know how it works. So you have to hear again what heaven is publishing. Now, I'm going to help you. Romans 10, 17. The Bible said that, so then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now, it's a little bit vague. I'm going to help you. Jesus Christ said, have faith in God. In the original, he said, have the God kind of faith. So how do you get? Because what that means is have the kingdom faith. Because it is kingdom faith that will cause the kingdom supplies to come. It's the technology that you need to develop. I'm teaching good. I'm feeling the anointing of God in this place. Now, now listen to Romans 10 verse 17 in NLT. So that because you have to understand what faith, which word of God, which one. All right. Now look at so faith comes from hearing, but that hearing has to be the good news. What is the good news? The good news of the kingdom. The Bible said that this gospel of the kingdom, the word gospel is good news, of the kingdom must be preached. This gospel of the kingdom. So if you don't hear the gospel of the kingdom, which is the good news about Christ, how he brought the kingdom, then you're not going to receive the faith that will cause you to receive the thing that had already given to you permanently. Chances are you're not hearing the right thing. And you have not received the right technology to receive what is already yours. Okay, look at it. Okay, now look at it in NIV. Give me NIV. Consequently, faith comes, but it comes from, look at it, having the message. We have the, the message. 
It's not everybody that is speaking is saying, you see, because Jesus Christ preached one message. The God, kingdom of God is here. And that message is heard through a word about. About. So when somebody gets it, I quit time the like I do from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. That's where demon dunya and abudua hakanang like samasa. It's not about, it's not the message. It's opinions of men. There are watches. What do you mean? Is God clock dependent? Right now that you're talking, some other people are sleeping. Your 3 a.m. is not their 3 a.m. So which one may God touch you? Do be have a booty? Dumb. So you have religious people. Look at me. For one day, think. So the fact that somebody is speaking doesn't mean somebody said that. There is a dimension of faith that you can never attain until you meet Kenneth Copeland. Don't look at it. Faith, when is is can a couple of written there? What dimension? So then you put it in that way. I do a seven o'clock. Could I be money at TV? So if you can say, ban, 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 ban. Can you think for once? So if you're going to receive what the kingdom is supplying, you have to have faith. What faith? About Christ, about the kingdom. When you hear faith about the kingdom, what you have, you don't have to. If you get the technology, you take. That's what she started hearing. Now, listen to me. Oh, my time is up. Let me sit down. I'm going to sit down. The reason why what you are getting, and some of you, you're too casual. You're too full of activities that nothing about this world works for you. Let me show you the process in which what made her to say, if I touch, and it worked. Because when she heard, who, nobody told she heard about that's what listen about Jesus about the kingdom that's what the Bible said and so the faith to take what the kingdom supply came and that faith created a voice now watch Psalms 39 and verse, verse 3 I'm going to sit down how many of you are glad you're in church come on wave your hand wave your hand I'm killing devils My heart was hot within me. What makes your heart hot? The Bible said that when the entrance of the word activate or bring it light. The Bible said that I pray that the eyes of your understanding be what? Be what? light okay so when you are hearing the message of the kingdom one of the and the message of Christ one of the first thing that will begin to happen to you is that you're going to feel warm how do I know Jesus rose up two guys on the street email was walking so he came talking with them and they were couldn't hear so he finished sat down broke the bread disappeared Listen to what they said. Say, ah, no wonder when he was talking our heart. What did they say? Our heart was what? Burned. Warm. Now, the major problem is that when you receive revelation like this, some of you, you never even go back to the YouTube or to, the, to keep hearing. You don't study. You don't read. It will never work for you. Because heart is the first stage. The next stage is while I was musing, the fire burned. Alright, so what is hot, you have to take it to fire. What takes it to fire is the word musing. 
Then my tongue speak. Three stages. That's the technology. Your casual, your phone. When you Anna, I do have that. She's not checking phone now. You cannot current a Bible, va? Can I check in WhatsApp? Oh, no. Yeah, you be, yeah, yeah, be. Two Ramon message in Bani. Yeah, yes, you go. Yes, you go. Yes, you go. Very casual. Some of you, you don't even stay under the word to get hot. Now, now, look at this in NIV. I'm going to help you. My heart grew hot within me. Next stage. When I begin to meditate, the fire burn. So when you take what is hot, you have to take it to fire. How do you take it to fire? Meditate. King James said, muse, I'm going to help you. When that happened, then, somebody said then. Then is after effect. You're not a parrot. That's why some of you, you're not getting it. You stand, I put the pastor, you have a, pastor, yes, yes, yes. I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy. I'm wealthy. That's not how you get wealth. Because you're parroting what has never become hot and what has never become fire. You're just parroting. Look at it. Then, you don't have a right to speak when you don't go through hot and you don't go through fire. And the effect will never happen. Now, look at it. Look at NLT. <laughs> My time is up. Look at NLT. You see, when you begin to meditate, it means you are thinking about it. The more I thought about it, what is the it? The word that causes it to be okay. When I thought, the hotter, so it becomes fire. When it becomes fire, the fire cannot be separated from what? So it ignited a fire of words. I can be sick. I am healed. Because now, anger, my atasomaka, out of the meditation. You just saw it. And Babun Kwana there, Babun, how are you winning? Babun was happening. No, it's about he sold everything and went into it. If you don't do that, you cannot get fire. And it's staying. You're not in church. You're not studying. You're not listening. You're not hearing the message. You're not hearing. Now, the word news is from a Greek word called hagik or haga. And that's why I'm going to sit down. That's meditation. What that means is that to momo himself to give himself to himself. You momo in pleasure or in anger because all of a sudden either no can so you're angry. I can't have this. Why am I here? You are you you stay with it. To haji means to ponder. You stay with it. You ponder. It means to groan. I can't be under this. But you are talking scriptures. It means to growl. It means to imagine. So while you are musing in a one room, you already are imagining seeing delivered. When you are seeing, you're creating the technology. Because when you're doing that, all of a sudden, fire is being created. There are some of you, when you do that, you just know. You come out with certainty. This is what creates the internal world. And you come out with a certainty. And it doesn't matter when the outside is not showing. Once you have it in the inside, wait. It's eminent. If you read the book, Ever Increasing Faith by Wigglesworth, one lady, she had goiter. So she stayed in this and boom. Imagine she saw goiter gone. She saw herself healed. Then she came out, just like the woman of the issue of blood. If I touch, so she came out, I'm healed. So the villagers were laughing because it's big. But you see, she's not saying based on what she's seeing. She's saying based on what has already happened. Based on what she saw in Hagik. She imagined it. But you see, when you imagine it, you mutter, musing. You roar. Look at next. You study. When you're meditating, you study. And look at what happened. That's why NLT said that in that heart, it creates words of fire. All of a sudden, you start speaking. In fact, you start speaking alone. When you are in Hagik, you become a madman alone. I can't be poor, I'm rich. I'm the head and not the tail. Alone. But you're not saying because when you are queer, maker A, B, C. No, you're saying because of Hagik. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, I can't have it. 
No, it's not. Himself took away my informative. Come. You've taken. I give. But look at it. You now begin to talk. That's what the woman became mad. If I want liberal touch, if I want liberal touch, if I want liberal touch, that's how. But what's happening is Haji. Because what she was saying is fire of words. And it's pulling her because all of a sudden she stepped in the field. And it's pulling her towards her source to receive what's over her. Then she uttered. If you don't do this, you can't escape. My time is up. Now look at it. So she went through that. And then, if I only but touch, and once that is happening, even when you fall, the force will pull you there. It will be pulling you there. Throw in the people. But you see, how can somebody that has lost blood have energy to be moving? It's not her energy, it's the force field. It's the power that is in the field. Come on, put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. If I only but touch, only the hem of his garment. Her, her king has created a voice. He created an utterance. She is groaning. If I only but touch. Why? Because everything that is mine is mine. There's something in the kingdom that is mine. The Bible said that when she touched, the kingdom knew that something went out. And look at what the kingdom said. If it were a religious organization, let her come and testify. When pastor preached and pastor said, then I became healed. No. Jesus said, that, Woman, you are. Look at it. He didn't say, My power. Because the healing has been there even before she was born. The healing was hers even before she hears the message. The healing was hers even when the doctors were taking her money. The healing was there when the religious, am I talking here? Woman! Your faith, am I talking here? Your technology, your power, your, am I talking in house of refuge? I sense in my spirit that somebody is about to take something. Take the next level. Take the power. Take everything that the Lord has provided for you. Somebody is about to move from the back to the front now. It's not because you earn it. There is a power that is in this place. If I but touch soup. The supply was there even if she touched it or she never touched it. But if she touched it she received what was hers even before she was born. Don't run after what is yours. Find out the technology to take what is already your own. You don't have to do ritual to take it. Go just do hajig. Create walls of fire. Wealth is in the system. Just as healing is in that system. And Jesus said, your feet has allowed you to take what has been yours even while the doctors were taking your money. Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. Doesn't matter how broke you are, when you get to that field, it's no more your strength. Something is going to be aiding you. How can somebody for years losing blood? How can she move in a crowd? It's not her strength. There's an aid while she steps in the field. Doesn't matter how broke you are. Once you step in that field, there's an aid. There's a supernatural favor. There's a supernatural uh, uh, you know, hand of God that will come on you. Your means can handle it, your reach can handle it, your years can handle it. And it's not a ritual. And it's not every message. It's a message of the kingdom that creates faith of the kingdom that causes you to receive what the kingdom had already supplied. Hagik. But it doesn't go like that. I'm not bringing rituals or tradition. You're too casual. You have never 
Some of you have never even gotten hot. A word is coming, you're on WhatsApp. If it doesn't enter, you can't get hot. And some of you, you have sugar, and then you forget. You look in the mirror, you don't know. Because WhatsApp, you're not sugar, you're looking at the next appointment. Instead of you, the next thing is that don't allow this one to go. You lock yourself and begin to hug it, mute mortar so that it becomes fire. And when it becomes fire and you start speaking, no one like three in hell can stop it. Because now, because you have already imagined, because you can only become what you have already seen. It's be, do, have. Come on, put your hands together. So how do I develop this faith? I run to church when the kingdom is preached. After I listen to this message,